What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum Elite Mini AI 370. And this is one that I've been really excited about, mainly because of the new APU we have here. This actually contains AMD's most powerful iGPU, the 890M, and that's because this is using the Ryzen AI 9 HX 370. And with this, we get 12 cores, 24 threads, based on Zen 5, these chips are very efficient and very fast at those higher TDPs. Even at lower TDPs, they perform really well. But with the new Elite Mini AI370, as you can see, I mean, we've got a really small form factor here. Kind of a new design from Menace Form. I mean, we've still got a mini PC box here. But overall, I'm kind of digging what they've done here. Now, along with the mini PC itself, we also get an HDMI cable. A mounting bracket so we can place this behind the monitor, under a desk, on a wall, and our small form factor 120 watt power supply which is still using a barrel jack. That's something I like to see so we know we can get sufficient power to this unit. Again, overall design here isn't off the wall. They're only offering this silver color variant right now, but one thing I'm noticing is all of the air is going to be drawn in from the bottom and it does kind of sit close to the desk, so we're definitely going to have to take a look at temperatures by the end of the video. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB 4, this does run at a 40 gig protocol, and we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Round pack, two more Gen 2 ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and our power input. I definitely wanted to give you a look at the internals here, but keep in mind with these new HX series mini PCs, these are actually utilizing LP DDR5X running at up to 7500 megahertz, so we do not have user upgradable RAM. So getting in here to change out some DIMMs isn't possible, but we can upgrade the storage quite easily. On the bottom, four screws, we can pop the top right off. You can see we've got a cooling plate here with a built-in fan that's going to cool our M.2 SSD. And the Elite Mini AI370 actually supports two PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSDs, so we can add a ton of storage to this mini PC. When it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, we've got that new AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. It's based on Zen 5, we've got 12 cores, 24 threads, and this will clock up to 5.1 GHz. But I'd say my favorite thing here is that new iGPU, it's the Radeon 890M. It's based on RDNA 3.5 and we've got 16 compute units as opposed to the older 780M's 12. And in the HX370, it'll clock up to 2900 MHz. This unit has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X at 7500 megahertz. I mentioned we can install two PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSDs. It's got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. And out of the box, this was running Windows 11. The first thing I wanted to get into with this new mini PC was the BIOS. So I wanted to show you some settings that I personally changed. I'm actually kind of glad to see some of this stuff. Now with this new HX370 PC, we're a bit limited when it comes to power options, but we do have auto power on, which is a great feature if you want to keep this thing running continuously. Uh, as soon as you plug it in, it'll boot up. So let's say you've got it plugged in, power goes out, or you get a surge or something like that, it'll come right back on for us. Wake on LAN, CEC or SEC support, power limit select. Out of the box, this was set to balanced, but we've got three modes, quiet, balanced, performance. Obviously, in performance mode, you're going to get the most out of this mini PC, and it can boost up to 60 watts. And down here, we've got our hardware monitor, CPU, smart fan configuration. It's disabled out of the box. You can enable it, and from here, we've got three modes, quiet, balance, performance. I'm actually just going to leave it in auto mode, so we're going to leave this disabled. It's going to do its own thing. It seems to be quiet and cool enough the way it is. And under CPU configuration, not much else in terms of adjusting that TDP, but I'm gonna leave everything like it was except for that power limit. We're gonna to go to performance right here. I'm gonna save, exit, and now we can get right into Windows. So far, this mini PC has been really fast, and initially going into this, I went into it at that balance mode like we saw from the BIOS we swapped over to performance, but in balanced mode, you'll still be able to get basically everything done. I would suggest go into performance mode if you want to get some gaming. It's just going to give us those higher clocks on the CPU and GPU. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI9 HX370, 32 gigs of LP DDR5X at 7500, and of course the Radeon 890M graphics. 8 gigs of VRAM dedicated, but it will use more if we need it. Checking out CPU-Z here. Run a stress test. I'll zoom in just a bit. You can see this does jump up to 
54 watts on the dot actually. But with the GPU working over time, we can do up to 60 watts and it will kind of slowly fall back on down to 54, 55. Not too bad. And the cooling system here is pretty great. If I move down, you can see CPU core. It's going on up just a bit, but I mean, we're putting a major load on that CPU. 12 cores, 24 threads. I have not seen this thing hit thermal throttle. And it's actually pretty quiet here in that auto mode. I did test out the performance fan profile and it does kind of ramp up a bit, but it will keep it cooler. While gaming on this with newer AAA games, yeah, we might see this kind of wattage up to around 50, 54 watts. Temperature's kind of going to be the same. It's not going to peg out continuously like it is here with this stress test. So we might not even see these kind of temps while gaming. This HX370 really quick and if you wanted to use something like this for everyday desktop usage like let's say uh, web browsing email checking even some photo editing and just heading over to menace forums website got that new gpu dock out everything loads up really quickly now this does have wi-fi 6e but we've also got 2.5 gig around back so overall, using this as an everyday desktop actually works out really well. The HX370 does put down some really good performance, and the 890M iGPU can get a lot of people by. Even with AAA gaming nowadays, it's not bad at 1080p. We will get into that in just a second, but I do want to go over some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. First up, Geekbench 6 coming in with a really nice single core of 2,909. Multi-core looking fantastic here for a mobile chip, 15,478. I also ran the OpenCL GPU benchmark with Geekbench 6. We scored a 44,420. And just to kind of give you an idea about this 890M, this is actually coming ahead of the Radeon RX 590. And I understand that that's an older GPU, but it did draw quite a bit of wattage. And given that this is an iGPU on par with that, I think it's pretty impressive. I also ran 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 35,267. And finally, Time Spy with a very impressive 4,127. Seeing this out of a Radeon iGPU is pretty awesome. I mean, we've definitely been trying to break that 4,000 mark since the 780M, and it's finally here with the 880M. Now I wanted to get into some PC gaming, and the first one we have here is Wukong. This is the built-in benchmark, 1080p, medium, FSR is at 50%, frame gen is on. We got an average of 75 FPS, and personally, I don't mind using frame gen with a game like this. It is a harder one. It's a newer game coming to the market. With an iGPU at medium settings, able to do over 70 FPS, that's pretty good in my opinion. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal. I know it's a little older, but I went back to this game. It's just a lot of fun. Right now, we're at 1080 medium. We're seeing a really good frame rate here. I've got Afterburner in the top left-hand corner. I've also got the end game overlay in the top right-hand corner. No resolution scale, so we're at a true 1080 medium settings. You can see from Afterburner, we are at that 54 watt mark. And over on Menace Forum's website, they state that this will do 48 watts. And I'm guessing 48 in balance mode. Going up to performance in the BIOS did allow us to get a bit more out of this unit. I also wanted to see how well this handled Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080, medium, got an average of 50. Might need a little bit of scaling there using Fidelity Cass. Spider-Man Remastered was the next game I tested, and we're at 1080, medium. This is some phenomenal performance here, but I do know the developers have done a lot of optimizations to this one and Miles Morales. We're seeing an average of 85 FPS out of this at 1080, medium. Esports games on this HX370 do a great job if you wanted to do Fortnite, Dota, and even Overwatch 2. Right now, we're at 1080p high settings with 100% resolution scale. I'm not even using FSR right now. We're getting over 120 FPS on average, and it's playing just fine on the Menace Forum Elite Mini AI370. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. 1080, medium, FSR, set to balance. And I'll tell you, usually when I run this on an iGPU, we gotta go to all low settings, FSR at performance to get over 60. With this setup, I'm seeing an average of 72 FPS, and we could definitely get a lot more out of it by taking FSR to performance or even going to low. 
but at medium, this is doing really, really good. Another thing I always like to keep an eye on while testing out these mini PCs is total system power consumption because in some areas of the world, energy does cost more than others and some people may be worried about this. While I'm doing my testing, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter and at idle, this is only pulling eight watts. It's actually a really efficient chip and remember, we are in performance mode. Gaming jumps up to 73 and the maximum that I saw this pull from the wall was 84 watts in total. And that was running a stress test Doing everyday tasks, you're not going to get anywhere near 73 or even 84. It's going to be right around 26 watts browsing the web and things like that. It really depends on what's going on with that CPU. And the last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps. And remember, from the BIOS, we can adjust that fan. We're right there at auto. And we've got the CPU in performance mode. Average gaming, 68 degrees Celsius. And through all of my testing, the highest temperature the CPU reached was 87 degrees Celsius. And this was sitting flat on the desk. You could turn this thing over and probably keep it even cooler. But Minisform has always been really good about their cooling systems in their mini PCs. Overall, I'm really impressed with the performance this thing's putting out. I mean, given that we don't have a dedicated GPU and we can basically play anything at 1080, albeit we may have to turn some of those settings down. The Minisform Elite Mini AI370 is definitely a great performing mini PC, but I would love to see some more BIO settings there. It is a bit locked down. Now we do have that quiet, balanced, and performance mode, but getting in there and being able to do a couple more things like overclocking the RAM, because on some other mini PCs with the same chip, we've actually been able to take it up from 7,500 up to 8,000, and it does make a difference with this 890M. I'll have at least one more video coming up. I do want to see exactly what I can do with this thing. There are ways around lockdown BIOSes, so I'll kind of look into that. But if you're interested in seeing anything else running on this PC, just let me know in the comments below. We could do a Linux showcase. Just let me know what it is. And if you're interested in learning a little more about this thing, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.